Ready to go live in three, two, one. What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Welcome back. This is season four, episode four of the Government Coins podcast. I am, I again, every day we get on this podcast, I have to say truly grateful and I really appreciate all the support that you all uh, continuously provide to this podcast and all of the knowledge and wealth that you gain from it. I get a lot of people who always reach out and say, you know, this was a wealth of knowledge and they've been able to do X, Y, and Z with it. So this is showing that we are really meeting the mission. So very grateful for that. Today's episode is a bit of a treat. Uh, because we wanted to tap into you, you get the question around should I do federal government contracting or state and local government contracting and I'm I'm never opposed to either of them it's more about what type of business you're in and how can you provide those that value to those um, agencies but I wanted to really kind of focus a little bit on the federal side and how you can tap into local resources at the federal Wait, tapping the federal resources at the local level. <laughs> so today I brought on Althea Harris. She is the deputy director or deputy district director of the South Florida District Office of the SBA. So I'm so happy to have you on, Althea. How are you? I'm well. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Thank you for what you're doing to get information out to folks who want to grow and succeed and really take life uh, by the horns. You know what I mean? So thank you. I like that kind of energy. You know what? I definitely appreciate that. And um, everything that you're doing as well, everything is lining up. So I felt like you were literally the best person to come on and talk about this today. Um, little fun, a uh, little known facts. Well, not necessarily, not even a fact, but I've seen Althea um, speak in a number of different events here in the South Florida area. And that's to go off and show you that she's really out here doing the work and championing small business owners in you know South Florida and also helping them get access to opportunities. So definitely wanted to say thank you again. But before I go on, because uh, I know a little bit of your story. I would love for you to tell our audience a little bit about yourself. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Well, yes, I, I like to joke uh, with people that I get around in a good way around South Florida. And because I love it, I love it, I love it. I love entrepreneurs. Uh, I'm married to an entrepreneur. Want, at least two of our four children want to be entrepreneurs. So I'm excited about that. Um, my husband and I have four children. Uh, two are in college. So one of them wants to be an entrepreneur. The one in high school wants to be an entrepreneur. And we have a middle schooler as well. So I'm originally from Washington, D.C. And I how I got to South Florida was I got married. Um, and it was so great because I met my husband. Well, my husband rescued me in uh, college. <laughs> so we went to I Howard like together. <laughs> yes. And he rescued me from D.C., my hometown, and uh, brought me to this paradise, you know, this tropical paradise where I get to work uh, for the SBA. SBA is actually my third federal agency. I started my career in the mid-90s working for the late Secretary Ronald Brown um, at the Department of Commerce. And there I got to travel all around the world supporting small businesses. And then after he died, I moved over to the U.S. General Services Administration, which is where I learned about government contracting which was handy dandy for when I uh, got married and moved to Miami because at the SBA, I feel like now I have this very well-rounded uh, understanding of small businesses from you know how to finance them here at SBA, how to help them leverage their certifications in government contracting. And then you know understanding uh, from GSA how government contracting works, what agencies are looking for, kind of how do you marry what you offer with what they're attempting to do through their mission. And even before that, at the Commerce Department to really uh, talk about ways that you can give the entire world the benefit of what you're doing, the products you're selling, 
for the services that you're providing. So it's been really great. Um, I also volunteer. I do a lot of volunteer at my church and uh, I'm on the board of uh, not only of my church, but also of Greater Miami Youth for Christ. And so, you know, I have a very full life. And um, I'm just delighted to be at SBA where I can help people fulfill their dreams of business ownership. And I, I live it, right? Because as I said, my husband is an entrepreneur. He's had his own law practice for like 25, 26 years. And trust me, I know the pain of business ownership, starting a business, growing a business. Oh my gosh, the risks you take and the confidence you need to have, the stamina and endurance that's required for business ownership. You know, it's not for everybody, but for those who do it, I just, I think they're exciting people and I applaud them. So I, I, I'm just delighted to be able to work with them and work for them, right? Because I'm at the federal, uh, federal level. So taxpayers dollars at work. So that's a little bit about me. Oh, I really appreciate that one. And I will also add to that, I, uh, the rescuing piece from DC. <laughs> that was a good one. I like that one a lot. Uh, but I think yeah. on the, uh, the other end of it is you going from the Department of Commerce to mm -hmm. GSA and now SBA and handling this entire district, which would you mind letting people know how big this district actually is? Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> it's huge. Uh, we are not the whole state of Florida. We are everything south of Orlando, which is pretty much all of it um, in terms of, you know, uh, really the business and entrepreneurial climate is thriving here in South Florida. We have such a dynamic, dynamic, dynamic market here uh, from the Space Coast on the East uh, Coast of Florida, where we have you know, all kinds of tech jumping off to the cultural melting pot of Miami, but also you know, the tech scene here is growing and the biotech and the health industries here in South Florida are really uh, extraordinary. Forget tourism, that's off, you know, that's just, crazy all over South Florida and Tampa, you know, with um, what they've got going on over there. We have all these um, military installations, even all the way down in Key West. So it's a very dynamic market with people from all over the world setting up here and doing lots of exporting and importing uh, from Miami and Fort Lauderdale, you know, the ports uh, uh, over in Tampa also. Just it's a, it's a marvelous market and it's gigantic. It's about 2 million small businesses. Um, we also have rural communities that we serve too. They just kind of, it's, it's just this wonderful hodgepodge of uh, entrepreneurship. And uh, the Kaufman Foundation uh, found a few years ago that uh, Miami is number two in the nation for entrepreneurial starts. And so one of the challenges in this market is um, not that is that we have very entrepreneurial people, but they don't necessarily scale up. So that's something that we're interested in and sort of monitoring that and assisting small businesses and not just having enough for themselves, but to grow. Right. Because we want uh, small businesses to grow and create more and more jobs because it's jobs, you know, that strengthen communities. And so that's a very um, interesting challenge right now with uh, all the talk of, you know, people finding it hard to find good people. And it's true. We're, we're hearing that from small business owners. Um, that's part of the challenge here in this market. But uh, by comparison, uh, South Florida, our district is considered one of the supersized uh, district offices across the nation. SBA has 68 offices across the nation and we are among only four supersized offices and you can probably guess who the other ones are right um, so we are um, the number one district in the southeast region we are the workhorse for the region um, which includes uh, states from Tennessee and Kentucky all the way down to Mississippi and over to the coast at North Carolina so we are a vibrant vibrant contributor 
to the economy, uh, not only of the state, but for the region and the country. Um, when I think about it, if you don't mind, I just thought I would mention, you know, um, we've come through the pandemic and in the entire state of Florida, the state of Florida received 10% of all pandemic dollars. So this state is amazing in terms of opportunity, entrepreneurial activity, uh, and, um, you know, North Florida is mostly rural. Their big city is Jacksonville. Oh, in Orlando. Orlando is just barely in their district. So, you know, but, 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 you know, it's a really exciting place to work. And that's how I think I can still be here. This is my 23rd year at SBA. So it's, 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 I just love it. I, I just can't even believe I get to work here and do this stuff. So huge congratulations on the, the 23 year anniversary. That is amazing. I, um, I, I mentioned sharing like the district because I really wanted to like hone in a little bit and let people know, you know, locally there are opportunities and I love that you mentioned military bases. So the SBA is, has 68 organ, well, 68 district offices, but offices, there are a yeah. number of different federal government agencies that are throughout the states. Um, and you can tap into those resources as well. But with yeah. the SBA, um, in terms of, you know, some of the work that you are doing locally, can we tap in a little bit to talk about like, what are some of the things that you are doing locally for small business owners? And then we also have the night where you said, congratulations on your uh, 23 year anniversary. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's just, it's gone, it's gone by so fast, but yeah. So SBA, of course, I think you've had, I know you've had um, our regional administrator on and um, you've had wonderful guests on who uh, have talked about various different aspects of just entrepreneurship, economic development, uh, business ownership. So SBA, if I just start with the four pillars, right? We stand on access to capital, access to government contracting, access to high quality counseling, mentoring, and training. And then we provide access to long-term disaster recovery resources, right? And uh, the pandemic made us very popular for that last one um, because we were the distributors of all the, of most of that, that COVID uh, relief monies. But so when it comes to uh, government contracting, what the big thing that we do is uh, our certification programs, right? So SBA uh, certifies small businesses in uh, four categories. The newest is now veteran business ownership. So we've We've absorbed that from the VA, which is great because that, you know, just kind of it makes this wonderful complement to the other uh, certification programs we already had, which is the 8A Business Development Program, the Women's Business Ownership uh, Program, and then also the Hub Zone, Historically Underutilized Business Zones. And I'll share with you uh, that the Hub Zone map this is hot off the press, has just recently changed. And so we'll be talking about that uh, in the weeks to come and how that will affect uh, business owners who are currently located in hub zones or who may end up in a hub zone and don't have that certification. So primarily uh, when it comes to government contracting, we really administer those programs and help business owners leverage those certifications to do business with the federal government. So I was adding that in because as soon as you said hot off the press, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so the hub zone maps are changing. You kept going after that. I'm like, wait, flag right. on the play. But right. um, that is different. So a little bit in terms of, is there any reason, sir, why they're changing and are they changing to increase spaces or decrease spaces? Yeah, no, it's okay. So um, there's a combination of things going on and, um, you know, it's all still kind of coming out. And it's lit, when I say literally out off the press, we just had uh, some training on it yesterday. So I'm not as well versed on it and all the nuances, but the point of the hub zone map changes 
is to um, number one, minimally uh, keep up with what's happening in communities, right? So the Hub Zone program is designed to spur economic development and as I said, historically underutilized business zones. So um, the first thing is we want to keep up with what's going on in communities to ensure that those who can benefit and should benefit those communities can benefit from the Hub Zone designation. One of the other uh, neat things that's happening across the country is the previous administration <clears throat> uh, allowed governors to uh, designate areas as hub zones that are not currently designated as hub zones. So SBA, the North Florida District Office, where Tallahassee um, is in that district, they're working uh, with Governor DeSantis to make more hub zones available so that businesses in those zones uh, can access the hub zone certification and then thereby leverage their um, location and certification for contracts, right? So then, um, and so that's, that's the idea, right? To increase the number of firms who can participate as hub zones in government contracting. And that way, you know, the federal government becomes a partner with small businesses to spur economic development in areas uh, across the country that haven't seen that kind of uh, energy. And um, so that's, that's, that's the latest, that's as far as I can go in terms of my knowledge, but it's really exciting because one of the things um, that we know from tracking the data is that the federal government in the aggregate has a challenge ma making the hub zone annual goal. And so hopefully adding more firms who can compete will make it, uh, help us get there. Um, reach that 3% goal. And and could you tell us a little bit more about those goals? I, I know there was some, like sure. a few of them that actually don't, you don't usually, or SBA doesn't usually, or is it not SBA? Some departments don't always meet those goals. So is That's there right. anybody that can kind of go into that a little bit? And then we'll yeah, come back sure. to and a little bit. If, if I later. may, I'd like to share um, my screen with you. Absolutely. And show Absolutely. you, um, tell me um, when it's showing. <clears throat> I can see it now. Yeah, awesome. Oh, okay. So. Wait, it um, says you started are, the screen share, but it's not showing the actual page. You're screen sharing. It's telling me it is. Should I stop? There it, it is. Again? I can see it now. I can see it now. Oh, oh it's just oh. a lag. Okay, great, great, great. Wonderful. I'm glad I didn't panic and, and jump <laughs> out of there. We'd be still waiting three more minutes for that to come up again. All right. So down the left side of the screen is categories, right? Certifications and where the federal government has a goal, which is in the next column, right? So you'll see, and then across the top of the number of years. So this is a five-year spread with the um, dollars and percentages that are spent with small businesses in these various different categories. So you'll see that the small business goal is 23%. And if you go all the way over to the right for year 2021, which is the last year for which we currently have data, uh, the, this data comes out in the summertime. So we'll soon know how things went in 2020. But uh, in for small business, you see, we do 27%. We routinely get over 23%. And the value of that 27% in 2021 was $154 billion and change. Uh, then small disadvantages and minority owned firms, the goal is 5%, easily doubled that, right? Uh, in 2021, and this administration has a, um, has a, a goaling, um, how do I put it, has um, established some goals for minority owned uh, business contracting that will escalate year after year. Uh, and it's starting with 11%, so we're already good to go on that. Uh, service disabled and veteran owned businesses, 3%, no problem. Got, we get over that 3%, no big deal. $25 billion worth of government contracting in the hands, uh, going through the hands of veterans. But then the last two categories, women-owned small businesses and hub zones, we don't make the goal. 
Uh, there's that one anomaly in 2019 where we got over 5% and uh, for women, but routinely we don't. And then these are aggregate numbers, right? So this is all, all federal agencies lumped together, but you can find uh, agencies that may have met the goal, but they're not making it such that they can, you know, pump up the, the aggregate goal, right? So, but even still, right, where we haven't made the 3% hub zone goal, 2.5% was still worth $14 billion to those businesses that are hub zone certified. So we're um, hoping that the map change will help um, uh, get more businesses into the hub zone program. Because listen, here's the thing. The thing about government contracting and small businesses is the federal government knows that small businesses are where innovation happens. Small businesses very often are quick and nimble. Uh, they're on the forefront, as I said, of innovation. And we want that innovation for us, right? We want to be able to harness that innovation so that we can do our work better, more efficiently, uh, et cetera. So um, it's, it's uh, important to the federal government that that uh, that small businesses gain access to that federal uh, marketplace. And we, as federal employees, are beneficiaries of their novelties, right, and their innovations. So that's kind of what's happening. Um, so certifications have value, <laughs> real dollar value, uh, if you're able to leverage them. And, you know, I don't even want to suggest that this federal marketplace is um, an easy marketplace. It is not. It is not. Uh, it is worth about $800 billion a year. So trust me when I tell you there are people who are very cutthroat and competitive about obtaining those dollars for their businesses, not the least of which, you know, are big businesses, right? So um, they want to be able to maintain their share, but an opportunity that a small firm can uh, use is uh, subcontracting, right, with prime contractors, because the federal government requires uh, prime contractors to do business subcontracting business with small businesses, the ones in the categories we talked about, women and veterans and hub zone. So that is a way to kind of get your foot in the door with federal contracting is to be a subcontractor. So I like that you shared that list and I'm actually over here looking for the list on the SBA website to show uh, which agencies and the goals that they may have um, they may need some assistance with meeting because that's a right. good way of looking at it. You just showed us that the women owned and hub zone are having to or having issues getting their numbers up. Well, now that's I know right. I can leverage that and tap into some of maybe the local agencies who are having a hard time meeting those goals. That's exactly right. And that is a way to attack the market, right? If you are a woman owned firm or a hub zone firm, or you can be a hub zone firm, right? So because hub zone is different from all other certifications in that the uh, certification is place-based. It's based on where your small business is located, not your personal characteristics of, be, of gender or race um, or even veteran status. So that way, you know, a person who doesn't have anything else going for them, so to speak, except that they're small, can also be hub zone. And knowing that the federal government does not make its goal in the aggregate is a point of leverage that can say, hey, contracting officer, I see you guys are not making the goal every year. Give me that contract. I'm capable. And that's the other thing. You know, people should not misunderstand these certifications. Certifications are nothing more than a hunting license. They are nothing that people, contracting officers are not just going to give you the contract just because you're a woman owned firm, just because you're in the 8A program. No, they are looking for qualified uh, contractors to do the work uh, on time, on budget or under, right, um, who are responsible bidders. It's not just about 
meeting these goals. We're not going to just make the goal just to make the goal and everything else goes to pot, right? So you want to make sure that uh, you are good at your craft and then also grab some of these certifications, the ones that fit you, and then use those to help yourself open some doors that might otherwise be closed. I like that one. I like that one. And there's one question that we got. Someone asked, how many years do you have to be in business to get a certification like woman on? Love that question. Okay. So with certifications, um, you want to, well, you can pursue that certification anytime you want. Okay. Um, however, entering the federal space is very challenging for a business owner who hasn't been in business more than two years. However, what I do tell people is um, if you have compelling experience, right? So you used to be a project manager for a large construction company and you, you know, know how to run a company because you know how to run a company. You have some other kind of company on the side or a consulting business on the side and you are generating revenue and you can make a compelling case that you can be competitive in the federal marketplace. But as I said, the federal marketplace is highly competitive and it's really hard to you know, get your foot in the door, but it's not impossible. That is for sure, because there are plenty of folks doing it. Okay, plenty of folks doing it. So what I would say about, oh my God, you know what? Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this, certifications only matter to the people they matter to. So if you want to do business with me, Althea Harris Enterprises, and I could care less whether you're a woman, minority, a veteran, then you don't need to go get certifications for my sake. Okay, you don't need to do that. Now, in the federal space, we care about those certifications. At the local level, in municipalities and states, they care. Government cares a lot about certification because we care about all of our citizens, right? And making sure that everyone has access. So um, be mindful of uh, who you want to do business with first. Be thoughtful about that and get the certifications they care about. Okay, and then in some cases, okay, there is no such thing as universal certification. Okay, so you can't get one and it opens all doors. No, because there are jobs attached to certifying firms. So, you know, you can't just get one with Miami Dade Public Schools and that's going to work in the federal space. And that just because you have a certification with Miami-Dade County doesn't mean Broward County is going to accept it, okay? So it's really important. Don't go around collecting certifications because certifications cost time. Got to fill out all that paperwork. And sometimes money, which means it costs money and money. So you want to be mindful of the certifications you need. So start with who do you want to do business with? And what certifications do they accept? And how many, so for example, if you know you want to do business with uh, Miami-Dade uh, College or whatever, and they accept the certification from Miami-Dade Public Schools, then you'll just go get the one from Miami-Dade Public Schools and use the certification at the college and at the school. I'm just saying, that's just an example that does not exist, okay? But so that's a way to maximize your time and expense by getting the one piece of paper you need that can open six doors, right? Rather than getting six certifications that only open one door when one would do. So that's a really important thing to know. Certifications only matter to the people they matter to. So get the certification of your customer, your desired customer. I hope that I helps. I like that. I like Free that somebody one. from oh, the, you know, you certification said, collecting. Yes, from the shackles <laughs> of certification collecting. I like that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so the other question we have is, does it still take 60 days to get approved for a HUBZone certification? Yeah. Roughly. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I heard him say 28 yesterday. 
28. Y'all pushing the envelope. Okay. 28 is pretty good for government. I'm just saying. I know. That's well, what and I'm here's saying. the other thing. <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing, right? Um, you know, uh, we literally at SBA are the little engine that could. Okay. I mean, we are, I'm, we are the redheaded stepchild of federal government. We get next to no money to deliver all these programs. And so, you know, I feel like, you know, with the certification programs, a lot of it is, you know, the guy behind, you know, the Wizard of Oz behind it. It's just one guy, one guy. It's just one guy, you know, making all the lights, you know, Richard Pryor behind the, behind the curtain at the wit doing the, you know, as the whiz, right? So it's not, I mean, it's a big production, but it's done by very few people. So, and I would so, so help us help you. Okay. Here, here, can I, can I make a plea? Please help us help you have a complete package. Please don't have anything missing. Because you know what happens when something is missing? You get to the back of the line. You know, sometimes at the post office, when you go to the post office and you, you don't know what you're doing and they'll say, okay, just step to the side and fill this out and then you can come back. Oh, you know, you're going to hit the back of the line. The post office may be nice to you, but at SBA, we're just going to keep the you know production line going. So do yourself a favor, be ready. And listen, there are resources to help you with that. You don't have to go it alone, but listen, I'm telling you, one of the chronic challenges, I think, um, in America is folks who don't follow instructions. Now that is spoken uh, by a person who really doesn't even like to read instructions, okay? I like to look at the pictures and put the thing on and put it together, right? But you gotta read, you gotta be responsive. And let me, I'm gonna say this and it's not gonna sound nice, but if you can't follow instructions to get a certification the first time out, mm, you might not be ready for the federal marketplace. Because bidding on a contract is a lot more instructions, a lot more I dotting, T's crossing than just filling out the same old information for a certification. Okay, so please, please, please give your certification application the attention and focus it deserves because it really can make the difference in your business. It really can. But not if you're held up 60 days when you could have had it in 28, right? That's, that's 28 is definitely that. a good number. I like that. Um, definitely looking at it from the aspect of, you know, being that you just took on the veteran all certification as well. But like it's, you know, having that type of goal, whether, you know, you meet or exceed that, I think it's an opportunity or at least to have that goal in general. It helps you, you know, work towards it. So that's exciting because I know sometimes yeah. people are always wondering, how long is it going to take? Like, uh, it takes a time. Yeah, and look, I mean, come on. You got to listen. It just can't all hinge on having a certification, okay? You got to have some other irons in the fire because you are coming to the bureaucracy. And I promise you, we do care and we do do good work, but look up the definition of bureaucracy. I'm just saying, have some other irons in the fire, right? So like if you're, if you want to be a hub zone firm and you're also a woman and also a veteran, you know, bam, 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 bam. And whichever one comes up first, you use it while you wait for the other one, you know? But there are things you can be doing while you're waiting, right? You can be researching who buys what I sell, who's short on the, on the, um, the different certification categories, you know? How do I get um, financing for my business? What, what size contract can I really afford? If I get that contract, where am I, you know, how am I gonna deploy my employees? You know, just things, that, there are things you can be doing while you're waiting. Like that. And someone said, or Excelsior Consulting Services said our, our SDVOSB certification process was very quick. So they wanted to thank the SBA for that quick turnaround on that one. Oh, well, so that's really huge. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. 
Um, so the, the next question, you said there are resources and things that you can tap into. And I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the local resources that you all are providing or some of the goals that you have at the region for the uh, small businesses in Florida, because I wanted really people to really see that these goals are possibly somewhat being deployed in multiple different areas. But I also kind of just want to brag on how Florida got their stuff together. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, well, no, just kidding. you know, um, the uh, federal government puts a lot of resources into uh, entrepreneurs, right? So at SBA, one of the four pillars you might recall, as I said, that we do uh, provide access to high quality counseling, mentoring and training. And among those in particular, as it relates to government contracting, our topic for today is the what are now formally known as the Procurement Technical Assistance Centers, the PTACs. They are housed at the Small Business Development Centers. Okay, so the PTACs are at the SBDCs, right? But now they have a new name. And I love it. It's called the Apex Accelerators, right? So we're trying to accelerate the growth of small businesses to the apex, right? To the zenith, A to Z um, of opportunities. And so um, you can check them out. And every, all of the counseling, all of the mentoring that's offered through the SBA is of no cost to the small business owner or entrepreneur because you've already paid for it with your tax dollars. And so you can get help from the Apex Accelerators to help you identify the federal marketplace, right? So I said, who buys what you sell? Oh, no. oh well, there's a way to find out. And the Apex Accelerators can help you with that. Um, and they can help you develop a strategy. They can help you look at your capability statements. They can help you um, kind of do a once over on your business plan to see if it makes sense and all that, those, those little competitive edges that you can get um, to streamline your approach to the federal government, but not only streamline it, but make it a compelling approach, right? So um, that you have all your ducks in a row, you have all your infrastructure in place. Like I said, you, you know, you can want an $80,000 contract, but if you can't afford it, we're not going to give it to you. So even the small business development centers where the Apex accelerators are located, they have all kinds of consultants on all kinds of, with all kinds of expertise and certification. In fact, today I just learned about, and I have to find it because I was so enthralled by uh, the name of this gentleman's, um, oh, I would know. I have to look it up. Okay. I cannot not look it up because it was so amazing. I'm like, what? Um, this certification, I was blown away. Anyway, the, you know, the consultants at the, um, at the small business development centers are having great impact on, um, on small businesses and helping them to grow and scale and finance, right? Some of their, um, oh man, it's going to take me forever. Oh, okay. I'm, yeah. I'm going to keep looking, but anyway, it's, um, oh, here it is. This is what I want. This is the one I want to find your SBDC. So where I am is Florida SBDC.org. And there's a fella at uh, the University of Central Florida who has a certification known as Profit Mastery. What? I was like, man, I want to know that guy. Profit mastery certification. And so, you know, if you're looking to, you know, grow your profits, you want to be talking to that, you know, at UCF. So um, they are, uh, you know, sort of territorial. So, um, but, but that doesn't mean he's the only one in the Small Business Development Center Network. So you can check out um, the SBDCs for um, 
access to not only though a government contracting at the federal level, but also at state and local levels, they have that expertise as well. And one of the things that, you know, uh, that same gentleman, in addition to having um, certification in profit mastery, uh, he's also Six Sigma, right? So, you know, you want to you want to get some of those processes in place because if you have raggedy processes, it's going to cost you money, which you cannot afford to lose on a federal contract. Trust me, we have more money than you do. Do not get into the federal space and underbid. Don't get into any space and underbid unless you know that's what you're doing. You're doing it on purpose. And you're strategically using it to get in the door as a loss leader to other work. But don't, you know, don't get into any contract where, you know, you're not profitable and you're not at least covering your costs. But again, if you're doing it because you want to get your foot in the door so that you can say you've had a federal contract or you've had a contract and whatever. But here's the other thing. Don't get that contract and don't perform. That's going to be a real problem. You don't want to get blacklisted for, you know, non-performance on a contract. So because you took bit off more than you could chew or you couldn't afford it or you had to rob Peter to pay Paul. That is a very stressful way to live. And it's not necessary if you will work with, you know, the folks at the Apex Accelerator at the Small Business Development Centers. And listen, they're not alone. We have the Women's Business Centers. Here in South Florida, we have three of them. We just were on a webinar yesterday with them where they were telling about their impact, amazing impact with women business owners. We also have the Veteran Business Outreach Center that's located in the Panhandle, but does the um, entrepreneurship training for active duty transitioning military called Boots to Business. And then also the Reboot Programming for uh, um, folks who've already transitioned out of the military, their spouses or widows and widowers. So there's that kind of uh, training as well uh, that you can, you know, and everything is so nice and virtual now. You know, you don't have to um, lose money and time traveling everywhere anymore, which is, you know, one good outgrowth of the pandemic is that we are now accustomed to getting information through podcasts and through webinars and online sources, which is very efficient. And then um, we also have SCORE, Counselors to America's Small Business. I highly commend SCORE. They're online at score.org. And you can find a counselor. There's a Find the Counselor tab. And you can find a counselor based on expertise. You can I'll find a counselor who speaks a foreign language. You can find one that's right here in your own backyard, or they could be in Arizona, but they have the expertise you're looking for. And guess what? You can have a long distance relationship with them where you email them at night and you wake up and you have an answer, hopefully in the morning. What could be better than that? You know, so we have lots of resources to help folks um, grow their businesses or even start their businesses. I mean, this, hopefully you've got some folks who are encouraged now to start their businesses. And look, you know, you've heard of the, the term side hustle. Listen, there is absolutely nothing wrong with having a side hustle to add to your family's income, uh, using your time and converting your time and expertise or knowledge uh, or skill into cash. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. I, I wish like I could that. think of something. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And as you were going, you see me typing like a maniac. I'm just grabbing yeah. links and dropping them in the chat right. as you're talking about them. I was Beautiful. looking up the Apex Accelerator. I found a link, but I just threw the the AP Tech website link in there as well. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. Take you You'll, somewhere. You know. Yeah, because it's new too that they're called mm -hmm. Apex Accelerators. So 
maybe everything hasn't transitioned over yet. Absolutely. In terms of the branding, but it's pretty and cool. And you can see it transitioning on like different uh, at the SBDC. So they've started to transition it on their website. So when you Google it, right. it's showing, you know, on uh, some of them, but the website, that's the only thing that has a transition. But you, if you follow the links, if you are looking at it on YouTube, I dropped the links in there. If you follow them, you'll be able to go like little bread comps, just pick them up and you'll, yep. figure, you'll figure it out through there. So definitely. That's and right. that's, a, that's right. a huge component of government contracting is research. So get good at it. <laughs> oh, friend. Thank you for saying that. Oh my God. Listen, you know how I talk about government contracting? Let me tell you how I think about government contracting. You know, you know, because you're down here in this market, Sawgrass Mills Mall, right? Or any of those gigantic, gigantic malls. Government contracting is like trying to find something very specific inside that mall. Now, if you walk into the mall, if you park over by the food court and walk into the mall, what's going to happen? You're going to smell the food, you're going to get distracted, and you're going to say, hold on a second, you know what, let me eat first. I say, you have a little something, something to eat. And then you're like, ooh, hmm, I'm getting a little sleepy. Hold on, let me get some coffee. And you get yourself some coffee. And then you walk a little bit, you walk a little bit, you walk a little bit, because you bypassed the research, right? The marquee that told you, you should get back in your car and drive around, but you didn't do that. You didn't look. You were distracted by the, ooh, that shiny thing in the window. I think I want to work for DOD. And you keep walking. Now you're getting tired. And you're still distracted because, ooh, look at that. Oh, I, you know what? I could use some new tennis shoes. These are starting to hurt. And so you're in the mall distracted by all of the things that you could buy, but not what you came for, right? And then if you're anything like me, you look at your watch, oh, I got to go pick up my children. And you leave the mall, never having gotten what you came for, right? That is what government contracting is like if you don't do your research. You will come out of there with stuff you don't need and never wanted, really, really, truly. And you, don't, you come out without the one thing you wanted. So it's very important in government contracting, like you said, do your research for sure, do the research. Stay focused. Do you know what? Do you know how I define focus? The hmm. elimination of options. Yes, I could go there, but I'm not going to do that. No, I could try that, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to focus on this research and I'm going to stick with it till I've made my decision. These are the five top agencies who buy what I sell. Might take you a month. That's okay. Take the month and give yourself timelines. It's not enough. You cannot just say, I'm going to do the research. No, 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 no. I'm going to do the research and I'm going to be finished. Where are we now? By Easter. I'm just putting something out there, right? By Easter. I'm going to be finished with this research. So whatever it takes, I'm going to be done by Easter and I'm going to have an accountability partner, whether it's an employee you pay, a spouse, a good friend, someone who keeps you honest. Hey, how's it going with that research? Easter's coming up, a couple of weeks. How you doing? Ooh, two weeks from now? Okay. You know, or reach out. How can I get help? How can I, you know, get a jump start on doing this research? That's so critical to success in the federal marketplace. If that's where you want to go. And it could be that, you know what? You do the research and you find out, oh, they don't really buy what I sell. So then why are you fishing in this big bond? I like I that. Get Why are you fishing in this else. big pond? <laughs> and Move there's nothing around. in there for you. Mm-hmm. That's definitely one. Are eh? you reminding me? I'll probably do a new video on how to figure out who's buying what you are selling. So I'll, I'll probably do something like that. That'll be necessary. I'm, I'm, oh, <laughs> a refresher. I'm sure be grateful. Yeah, but they'll be grateful for that help. Yeah, absolutely. So um, j- last thing is, so as the regional, uh, well, as the area for the, uh, sorry, as the, de- as the deputy for the South Florida region, I'm trying to get it. I don't know why I'm so tall tied. Because <laughs> it's a um, lot in like government. Listen, the, the title, a full title. I was like, the, 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 uh, yeah. I know. as that. <laughs> um, right. What are some of the 
things that you will be implementing this year for uh, some of our small businesses. And I know we talked a little bit about um, how to leverage the resources at your, or figure out who's selling, but how to leverage that at your local area, local level. Let's talk a little bit uh-huh. about how, you know, small businesses in Florida can leverage those resources. Okay, so um, I don't know what's happening here. I'm going to try and share my screen to answer your first question. Okay. Um, hmm, why is it acting like it doesn't know what I'm saying? Okay, I think it is. I think I'm just. I don't know. I'm just going to share my screen and hope for the best. What do you say? (laughs) Okay. Fingers crossed. Hope for the best. (laughs) No, no, no. It's not acting right. Hold on. I'm going to fix it. Hopefully. Take your time. In the meantime, I do have a few a uh, few things mm-hmm. that I can go through. Someone said happy International Women's Month to both of us. Thank you. We appreciate mm-hmm. that. It said this information. Thank you for this information. Someone said she's giving out gems. So these are all oh, jewels. God. Listen, you got the people going. I see Excellent. a bunch of fire and gem emojis in here. <laughs> and Excellent. I'm hands. so glad. The praise hands. It's my favorite. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> excellent excellent yeah, I like yeah. those. okay did i do it i think i'm doing it hold on one second ah finally okay now i just have to hit share screen um so you asked me a couple of questions and i'd like to start with this one um and that is our theme in south florida uh for 2023 uh is New year, new you, new business. Okay, so in this new year, we are shedding the grave clothes of the pandemic, right? We're taking off all of that. We're taking off the fear. We're taking off the dread. We're taking off, you know, uh, staying coward at home, you know, stuck at home. No, we're looking forward, right? Into this new year and all of the opportunities that it presents, especially here in Florida, where, you know, we've been an open economy since, you know, really early in the pandemic. And I'm, I personally am grateful for that. And having had, listen, four children going back to school. Oh, boy, I tell you, being working at SBA at the beginning of the pandemic, when we were the ones giving out all that money, and four children at home dragging on the internet, talking about mommy this and mommy that, I was going crazy. So thankfully, you know, here in in, in Florida, we've been open, right? So let's act like it and go forward in this new year. But also we talked a little bit about mindset, right? We've got to go in this new year with a new you, right? Renewing your mind, regenerating your thoughts, not thinking old scared thoughts, but new thoughts. And as you do that and bring your business into alignment, right? With proper infrastructure, adding those processes that make you more efficient, that make it possible for you to save money, right? Or hire more people, that new you, that new outlook, that new um, infrastructure you're gonna build in your business and in your personal life, is going to lead to you having a new business, right? And that new business that works efficiently, that's fully targeting um, your and staying focused is going to lead to new business, right? You're going to be more attractive to lend to. You're going to be more attractive to do business with because your stuff is ready to rock and roll. And the reason this is our theme is because We know from three years of dealing with the pandemic and people coming to SBA for help that too many small businesses were not ready for prime time. They hadn't done their taxes. They didn't pay their employees above board so they couldn't get a PPP loan because PPP was payroll driven, but you don't pay people. You pay them under the table. Then you couldn't get a COVID loan because you run all your expenses through your business and it shows you can't pay back anything on top of having a closed economy. 
So we know that and we want to help people. And that's why our two big goals this year is access to capital, access to federal contracts uh, through financial literacy and readiness, readiness. So learning about how to improve your credit score so that you're not, you know, just kind of stuck in this hole and unable to access capital, knowing that you should not run all of your expenses through your business to, to just forego paying taxes, that's fine if you don't want to grow. But if you want to grow your business, then you're going to have to pay taxes. And then you just figure out how to do that. And the SBDC can help you with that. All those resource partners I talked about can help you with that. And if you have a new business and you understand uh, financial, your financial statements, you know what? You can not only get a loan, you might be able to get an investor who can help you drive success. So we want to do a lot of programming and are doing programming around financial literacy. Uh, April is financial literacy month. So I encourage your listeners and viewers to come out to our website, sba.gov forward slash South Florida to see our uh, schedule of activities. We have a channel on Eventbrite. We'll be doing uh, ads, you know, in Eventbrite where you can sign up to attend some of those sessions but then also access to the federal marketplace. We want to help people know about certifications and leverage them and um, be ready for a contract. And you know what I said earlier, in order to be ready for a contract, you have to be financially ready for a contract. So we end up back at section one, uh, priority one. And then what we know is we are a small organization um, we, you know, though we have this gigantic market here, we have very few employees. And so we know that we need partnerships and collaborations to help us reach our uh, desired ends and the, our desired audience and customers. So thank you once again for letting me be on here. And we want to reach those equity communities, those communities of people who have felt left out, uh, who don't feel as though they have access or who have not had access. So we are looking to uh, do some partnering. Um, this year, uh, SBA has signed a uh, national strategic alliance memorandum with the Panhellenic Council, the Divine Nine, the Black sororities and uh, fraternities. And so we're looking to ride those rails to make sure that members of those sororities and fraternities and everyone that they touch and connect to uh, have access to all that we've talked about today. So those are our, our priorities here in South Florida. And this is our theme for 2023. And this is what we are singularly focused on. And we are eliminating all the other options. This is what we're doing this year. Nice. So and thanks already for letting me share off to that. this start. <laughs> I said, nice and yeah, already off to that. a good start. Definitely. Um, yeah, I think that immediately is just something that, you know, being it, you have all these events that are happening. Well, going through, I just was, I posted the Eventbrite link in here as well, but just going through some of them, you see, you have, you know, employee retention tax credit, you have things about the woman owned oh, small yeah. business. So it's just like, you already have a lot of things that are going on locally. So everyone I'm encouraging you right now, tap into your regional, your local um, agencies who are already providing these services. Yeah. And listen, you know, even if the federal marketplace is not for you yet, yet, you can put your big toe in the water at local municipalities. Listen to me. When I worked at the Commerce Department way back in the mid 90s, do you know, now this is a federal agency, our budget at that federal agency was the same as Miami-Dade County. Miami-Dade County is an enormous spender because listen, Here's what you need to understand about government. Government does not make anything. I, I, I joke with people all the time. Only thing I make are PowerPoint slides, okay? And I needed a computer purchased for me. And if I print the PowerPoint slide, I need paper purchased for me. Federal employees, we don't make anything. So we are the consummate consumer. 
And that's true for municipalities. We are a consumer nation. And so when we need something, um, when a federal employee needs something, the federal government buys it for them. You think those astronauts out there on the space station built the space station? No. The United States government paid somebody to build the, the space station. Oh, and the rocket they go up on? You think they make those rockets? No. You think federal employees clean the buildings? No, we don't. You think we change light bulbs? No, we don't. We hire people, small businesses, ideally, to do that for us. You think that's you think I'm out there wielding a hammer uh, and nails to build a, a, a new federal building? No, I'm not. No, we hire construction companies, right? You think I'm in here making design decisions about the office space? No, no, no. Uh, an interior designer is subcontracting on a construction contract to, you know, beautify the space once uh, the building is up. So it's really important that you think about you know, getting your big toe in the water at the local level, they have plenty of money now in comparison to us, no, but still, and those local municipalities and um, buying operations like school boards, you know, they have bonding uh, abilities, meaning they go out onto the bond market to finance their construction and renovation of their schools and what have you and big projects. So they have money and again, they're not the ones building anything, constructing tunnels and no, 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 they're hiring people. So uh, a, you know, a firm could, or a business owner could become wealthy just at the local level and never come into the federal marketplace. So don't overlook that. And, and I'll say this too, um, and I've heard it ever since I've been at SBA, um, far too many out-of-state companies get contracts in this state from the state government and from municipalities, far too many, considering the fact that there are, especially in South Florida, such a dynamic small business market, small business community. So, you know, look at that, but th those locals usually have their own certification. So I swing back to remember now, decide who you want your customer to be and get their certification. There's a whole and world of opportunity though. That is definitely the icing on the cake, like the icing on this cake that we've been baking throughout this episode. <laughs> and I, I love that, you know, we too often try to focus on whoever is giving opportunity, but try to become that local go to. So I like that because that'll keep them from sending money outside of the state. Just bring it to me and I'll put it. Yeah, because I got beef. that's right. <laughs> That's right. And you know what? Focus on, I would say this too, because so much is a matter of perspective, right? So focus on what value you add to the end user, right? What makes you distinctly better than all these other? And it might be this very narrow way, but use it and then and think about it from that perspective, not so much who's doing this, who's doing that, uh, no, no, what do I have to offer that all the rest of you think or should think makes me irresistible, you know, become irresistible to people, you know, have quality and excellence in your work, because, you know, if you come at it from a perspective that government owes you anything, get in line, if I owe you, I owe everybody else too, so now what, now what are we going to do? Do you know what I'm saying? Do you, you know, so so let's not make it about that, but what about, hey, you know, she's irresistible. We really have to have her on our team, you know, and that's that's the place and space you want to be. So anyway, that, that was an extra. As soon as we were about to hop off, someone asked a question and I just wanted okay. you to, uh, do you have to be certified as a woman-owned business, uh, woman-owned small business to win a government contract? At the fe no, no, unless, right, unless the contract is set aside specifically for woman owned competition only. And there are contracts like that. So when you go to, oh, I, can't, I haven't memorized the new web address, but you'll get there from SAM.gov. When you go there, or if you go to the old FedBizOps, you know, .gov, 
um, you'll see, no, I, I can't remember, you know, the, I, just, well, I, I was just saying the fedbiz.gov. Oh my, that website was, it was, yeah, it was a website. <laughs> so it'll, tr- it'll, it'll move you over to the new site. Anyway, when you look um, at federal contracting opportunities, you'll see sometimes small business set aside, you know, and so you'll know that it's exclusively for small business competition only or 8A competition only or hub zone or women. And um, so in which case, right, if it's set aside for a specific certified group, obviously if you're not certified for that, you're not going to be uh, eligible to participate in that contract. But now keep in mind, we don't certify small because over 99% of all businesses in America are small. We're not going to certify that, right? And you're pretty much going to be, you're probably small. The likelihood of you being in the less than one, uh, 1% of all businesses in America is remote, right? So, um, so, so you want to, if you can, get some other certifications. But remember, if you remember from our uh, chart, uh, small businesses are to get at least 23% of prime contracts and they're get, in 2021, they got over 27%. So you can do, go quite far. You know, there is opportunity just being a small business, but the more of those other certifications you have, the better for you because the contracting officer can count you in more than one category. So it's helpful if you can get it. But now what does it mean to be a woman owned small business? It means that you own and control 51% or more of the business, you, a woman, or a combination of women. And you have to have the best title, the best job, you know, be paid the most uh, in order to, you have to have decision authority, decision-making authority, firing, hiring authority, you know, check signing authority. So it's not just you know, you're married to some schmo and he pushes you forward as the owner of the business so he can get contracts. No, you have to actually own and control the business, which is very important. And, you know, look, women are among the fastest growing group of uh, businesses in America. So here in March, Women's History Month, you know, that's uh, worth mentioning. Someone also asked, can you use information from your military uh, report at world well, report cards as your performance? Hold on. I'm not your sure what that reports. means. So they're asking, I get it now, uh, for past performance. Okay. Can you leverage mm-hmm. your military background um, as experience? Well, it's leverageable as experience, but not, you know what I mean? Like it's part of your credentials for um you know, being qualified to do the work, but it's not considered past performance. No, a contract for that thing is considered past performance. But that's great. You should, listen, SBA knows that veterans index is very high for success in business. So if you have veterans listening to me, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Because, you know, uh, veterans um, have discipline. They have focus. Um, they have courage. Come on. They have courage. You know, they know how to follow instructions and give commands, right? So, um, you know, they, that's why they index so high for success in business. And they're, they're relentless, you know, and they're trained to be. These are all excellent qualities for business ownership. So, and yes, they end up having very specialized knowledge once they come out of the military that they can leverage to do something else and sell their services right back to the government without actually being an employee of the government. That's it. So. That's it. We are, we are no <laughs> longer taking questions. <laughs> no, I just know, kidding. I no. This stuff forever. And I know, right. No, but it's, it's literally one of those topics. Uh, the, the information is endless and your knowledge in the space is endless uh, as well. So definitely it's something it that we can endless. continue to have a conversation about. Yeah. So check out our website, check out the Apex Accelerators, learn as much as you can do webinars and all of these small business operations at these local governments, state governments, we're all doing webinars to increase your knowledge. So, yes. you know, and, and all our stuff's free. So, yeah. you know, you can learn a lot 
you know, don't, don't just be a consumer of information, you know, mm-hmm. be a doer. Okay. Because you could just ingest, 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 and get fat and never mm-hmm. do anything. And, and you can overwhelm yourself. So that's why I say, break it down into little pieces, have timelines, have someone to help you stay accountable, and then you'll move through and uh, ultimately, hopefully be successful. But we're here for you. Thank well, you. I appreciate it. I know everyone in the audience appreciates it as well from the uh, amount of emojis that I see. So <laughs> super excited and happy about that. Thank you again. And I know this will not be our last conversation. We'll probably end up coming back, circling the block and bringing you back on a few more times too, just to probably talk about specific um things within the space are also some of the things that you have going on in this area. So thank you so much. Oh, I would love that. Thank you so much. I'd appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. Boy, the time just flew by, didn't it? It did, right? We were looking at it like 130. We didn't went past everything. So, but Uh, um, definitely again, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. If you haven't had an opportunity to uh, go ahead and like this video, make sure you share it with a few people as well and go ahead and follow those links to make sure you are tapping in and connecting with uh, Althea and her team at the, I think it's sba.south.gov forward slash South Florida. There we go. You got it. So, That's and right. I also, if you're on the YouTube, I already dropped the link in there. Check out all the links. We don't do this research for nothing. Um, but this was a good episode, and I will see y'all soon. All right. Peace. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. That was nice.